Okay, so now we're ready to step into the virtual dark room, which is our Camera Raw palette. Um, something interesting about Camera Raw, if a lot of people are interested in shooting it because it's basically the closest thing to having pure information, the way you would have a latent image on a negative, and then it gives you the control once you get on your computer software by really having the types of controls you might have in a dark room and the kind of latitude. Not quite, but we're getting there. Um, so if you think of the Camera Raw palette as developing your film, um, it makes a whole lot of sense. So we're gonna take our lawn image and because it has the extension CR2, which is a Camera Raw file extension, it can't open up in anything else. In other words, you won't be able to open it in a preview type photo viewing kind of software. So if you're trying to do that at home, um, you need to have Photoshop and this is very important is you need to have the software um, or plugin for your type of file format. So whatever kind of electronic file you have, whether it's a Nikon, a Canon, Olympus, um, they have their own proprietary software and usually it comes with your camera when you buy it and you can use their viewing software or you can download um, the plugin for your camera from the Adobe site. So, but a lot of people get frustrated with that and they want to use something like iPhoto or Picture Viewer and it just won't work. So, but the payoff is big for using Camera Raw. And so for most of this class, that's what we're gonna focus on. Because this isn't a consumer photography class, it's more of a professional college level course. Um, we're gonna work in, in the best possible way. So I'm going to open this image and you could double click on it and this would actually open in the raw palette. But just to make sure, I'm going to right click this. You could also drag the image down to the icon for Photoshop, but I'm gonna go straight to the message that says Open Camera Raw. And um, a really good shortcut, because you'll be doing a lot of this, is uh, Command or Control on the PC and the letter R for obviously Camera Raw. So that's a really good shortcut to remember. Okay, so now we're looking at our darkroom. And um, one of the first things that you may notice is that there's a lot of buttons down here in the bottom. Done, cancel, open image, save image. And these aren't that self-explanatory, so I want to go over each one of these. Um, done is a beautiful thing. What that does is when you make your changes and you hit done, um, it go it just closes immediately but saves those changes and there's not a whole lot of lag time it directly goes to save cancel is if you want to get rid of it whatever you did and I, I see a lot of people who think they made a mistake and they want to go back so they cancel and then they reopen it that's not necessary if you hold down option notice it changes to reset I'll do that again option and you'll be able to see it says reset. Now if you're working on a PC that's going to be the alt button instead of the option button. Open image keeps the image as camera raw but will open it up in, in Photoshop proper and then way over here save image which is something we'll do as a whole tutorial unto itself um, is an excellent way to actually convert your raw images to whatever file format you want to work in, whether that's a Photoshop document, .psd, a TIFF document, which is a pretty good universal, .tiff, or a um, JPEG. So this is your chance to actually convert your image out, which is one of the last things we're going to do. So let's take a look at how our darkroom works. Um, first of all, up here on the palette, there's, let's see, well, how many is it? Like eight different headings. And each of these headings, as you can see, has multiple sliders. This could take a whole semester just going over this. So we're gonna start with number one. It looks like an aperture and it's called basic. Looks like a camera aperture. And this is our main darkroom work. 
and we have a nice big preview over here of the image. Um, I also want to point out that there's a button for preview, speaking of previews, that will let you turn it on and off and it'll take you back to what you started with and then you can see how you've changed your image. So, okay, the first thing is white balance. And strangely enough, white balance is an auto tool and I'm usually against anything that says auto, like autofocus. Um, although these days I'm using it more often, but, um, so white balance is automatic and what it does is it has several choices, daylight, cloudy, shade, tungsten, which means like a household, household light bulb, 3,500 Kelvin, a fluorescent bulb, you know what that is, flash, and you can make your own custom white balance. So if I go to, this was obviously daylight, it wasn't cloudy, and if I hit that, let's take a look at what it does to our image. I'll turn the preview on and off. You may or may not be able to detect that what it did is it took a little blue out of the image. Let me turn the preview off. Um, when I initially looked at this, I thought it looked a little cold, which is a description used for a blue cold tone. Um, yellow would be considered a warm tone. So when I turn the preview back on with our daylight white balance, it brings in some more of that natural yellow. Now, so usually what I do, I never trust total auto. So I actually want to be able to control it a little bit more myself. So I'm going to go to what's called color temperature right here. And I'm going to use this slider. It gives you a spectrum from blue to yellow. And this actually correlates to the Kelvin temperature um, of light, and which is a spectrum of blue to yellow. And if anyone wants to do an extra credit research project, look that up. Kelvin is a man's last name. Okay, so 5500 is equivalent to daylight and on the Kelvin scale. So that's what, when we hit the white balance, it went straight to that. But let's say I want to see how it looks a even a little bit warmer. Let's try it. I'll go too far so you can really see it. Now see how the lawn is turning almost Kelly green. It looks ridiculous. And then the other side of the spectrum, it looks icy blue. It's kind of cool like that. But I'm going to go just a pinch above our 5500. I'm going to go to 5600 here. Then tint. Tint gives us the uh, green magenta spectrum. And, you know, I'm kind of wondering if this picture might be a little too green. Um, let's see if I put a tiny bit of magenta in here. And this is subtle, you guys. You may not be seeing this on your screen. Um, but I actually like it a little bit less green. Let me show you what it looks like with too much green. Whoa, this looks like AstroTurf on steroids. So I'm going to back that off a little. And I definitely want this to be really green grass, but I don't want it to look artificial. So maybe there. And what's interesting is once I bring in some of that magenta, I actually kind of want to take a little more blue out of there. So maybe right there. Okay, so now let's go down to our exposure and this, um, although a lot of people say with Camera Raw, you don't even have to meter, you can just fix your image later. That's not true at all. I find that metering is even more important in digital imagery than film. Film actually has more latitude. And what I mean by latitude is that it can actually render an image with either under or over exposure. And a sensor in a digital camera isn't quite as flexible. So metering is more important than ever. So I'm going to try and lighten this picture up. And it's kind of obvious it goes from black to white here. So to the right's going to lighten and to the left is going to darken your image. So let me show you too much. That looks blown out. So I'm going to bring it. And you know, a lot of times it's a good idea to just go beyond what you need because it's very hard to detect on the on the screen. So if I then just pull it 
back in. So, and what I'm looking for is that my mid-tone areas, like right here, this would be actually a blown out highlight, not so good. This is kind of a disaster. I might actually crop that out. And so I'm really looking in my middle tones here to set my exposure. I'm going to go a little bit darker. I kind of like that richness in there. Recovery, the next slider. What that does, and you, it's very subtle. Um, you can pump up this recovery to try and, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm bringing a little bit more information down in here. Fill light is, if, is as if you've added an extra light to the scene. And so I'm going to try to put a little, I don't want a lot of fill light here. You know, if I did a lot of fill light, I'd actually back off the exposure a little. And then the black slider, which really helps to bring up your contrast. It deepens your shadows. And so in a lot of images, you may choose to use just the blacks and the exposure. And usually if you lighten your exposure and darken the black, what you'll get is equivalent to going up a contrast grade. So if you've done regular photography, it's like using a filter step. Um, if you haven't, it's really equivalent to just adding contrast. So let me darken those shadows and I'll go too far so you can see it. You can see how that really pumps up the contrast and that doesn't look very good. I'm not going for an unreal image here. So as we go through those, and, and that's all I want to look at at this video is the temperature, tint, exposure, recovery, fill light, and blacks. And you may not remember what the image looked like. It might in your mind be like, well, it's not that much of a change. And so by turning the preview on and off, here's off, and now on, off, on. Hopefully you can see that we really pulled that image up a little. Um, it now seems like the other image is very blue and very dark. And by those subtle changes, it's a much better image now. Later we'll deal with cropping it and maybe even straightening it out a little bit. So at this point, I've made all my changes and I'm going to hit the done button which means I don't want to open it. I don't want to work on it anymore. I just want to say I'm done and it automatically saves my changes. So don't you think that Camera Raw is incredibly powerful? Um, it's the tool we're going to be using almost every day. So take it away, Iggy. <laughs> is he saying raw power? I never knew. He's talking about Photoshop. 